Ken Burns is here. He is most well known for his critically acclaimed documentary films such as Civil War and Baseball and Jazz. With his latest work, Burns has taken on Mark Twain, arguably the most important writer in American literature. Though Twain's writing was full of humor, his life was full of tragedy. Burns' new film is the story of two men, Samuel Langhorne Clemens and his alter ego, Mark Twain. And here is a look. He was a southerner and a northerner a Westerner and a New England Yankee, a tireless wanderer who lived in a thousand places all around the world. He would call just two of them home, the Missouri town of his childhood, which he would transform into the idealized hometown of every American boy, and the magnificent Connecticut house he built for his wife and children, which he hoped would shelter them from hardship but where heartbreak found them, nonetheless. During his long life, he was a printer's apprentice and a riverboat pilot, a prospector who never struck gold, and a Confederate soldier who never fought a battle. He was considered the funniest man on earth, a brilliant performer on the lecture circuit who could entertain almost any audience and a spectacularly inept businessman whose countless schemes to get rich quick threatened again and again to bring him to ruin. But above all, Mark Twain was a writer, a natural-born storyteller, and a self-taught genius with words who understood before anyone else that art could be created out of the American language. I am pleased to have Ken Burns back at this table for what he just advised me was his ninth or tenth appearance. I think so, something like yeah. that. But where do you put this? I mean, why is Ken Burns doing Mark Twain? I don't know why I haven't done him before, you know. He once said, I am not an American, I am the American. Yeah. Uh, that makes him absolutely interesting to me, the combination of hubris and truth embodied in that stuff. We had to do it. What is your mission then? I mean, baseball, jazz, now Clemens, and you've done bridges, and you've done other things. I'm curious about how my country works. Uh, I'm interested in the mechanics. I've been making the same film over and over again about how we Who work. Who we are and how we work. Yeah, and I'm interested in American identity and creativity and race, and of course, Civil War baseball and jazz do that, and of course, Mark Twain does that all throughout, because this is the most courageous of all writers willing to take on the question of race. As Dick Gregory says in our film, this is the first time a human face has been put on a black man in all of literature. And uh, Ernest Hemingway said, all of American literature begins with Huck Finn, and it has to do as much with the courageous stand he's, he's undertaking to get into the underbelly of who we are, as it is the great writing, the great language, the willingness to speak and sound the way we spoke and sounded. Why is this a tragedy? Well, here you have the guy who's the funniest man on earth, um, Mark Twain, uh, and he still is funny. You know, lots of 19th century humorists aren't funny anymore, but when Mark Twain says, it's not that the world is filled with fools, it's just that lightning isn't distributed right, you're dealing with somebody who was funny then and funny now and will be funny in a long time. And then Sam Clemens has more heartache, more heartbreak than you could possibly imagine. Two siblings early in life, a father, uh, a brother, favorite brother in a horrible steamboat accident, a son, a father-in-law, two of his three daughters and his beloved soulmate, plus he goes uh, bankrupt in front of the whole world, a humiliation which forces him into exile and, and pushes him out of the country for a long time to earn it back on the lecture circuit. And then Mark Twain is still being funny. And then you have to ask questions about what the source of that funniness is. And as Twain himself said, the source of laughter is not joy but sorrow. There is no laughter, he said, in heaven. Was it difficult for you to make because of the nature of the man and because... You know, it's not just telling the story of the Civil War and telling the story of jazz and telling the story of baseball and telling the story of... Well, you, you've got two parallel so things going on. Telling the story of a on. funny man. First of all, you have to deal with the, the, the public, the Mark Twain, the writer. And that's always hard because writing is such a singular and personal and interior thing. And us documentary filmmakers work with lots of people and all of that. So it's how you make the writing come alive. And then you have to somehow meld the personal biography. I mean, Mark Twain wrote a book called The Gilded Age in which he excoriated the get-rich-quick mentality of something similar to our irrational exuberance of the 90s. Well, Sam Clemens lived it. 
And so how, how do you fit into the same box two seemingly contradictory people? And that was the great challenge. And of course, also the great delight in, in working on a film like that is all the undercurrents of Mark Twain. I've always been fascinated by what will now be answered in part, which is the notion of the choice of Mark Twain. Mm -hmm. Much consideration of what ought to be the name. Roll tape. Virginia City was also the home of the Territorial Enterprise, the most read newspaper between Chicago and San Francisco. Its editor offered Sam a job covering local events at $25 a week. Clemens loved the reporter's life. He haunted saloons, theaters, whorehouses. He drank, smoked, played cards and billiards with other newsmen late into the night. Going west brought him accidentally into the company of a great proto-psychedelic counterculture newspaper society out west in Nevada. A bunch of talented wild men improvising a whole new newspaper art form with tall tales and lies and hoaxes and great writing. With his new career underway, Sam Clemens decided to take on a new name, one that would stick with him the rest of his life and eventually become the most celebrated in all of American literature. On February 3rd, 1863, at the end of a dispatch written from Carson City to the Territorial Enterprise, he signed himself Mark Twain. There's a lot of ambiguity in that. Two fathoms, Mark Twain, is the point at which dangerous water becomes safe water, or the point at which safe water becomes dangerous water. And I think Mark Twain was always on that margin. That's where he lived, on the edge, between the lightness and the dark, between safety and danger, but always on the flow of the river. Uh, it ends on Monday night with what? It ends with Huck Finn. And if I had to... Um Go to St. Peter, as uh, Mark Twain is constantly talking about, <laughs> yeah. and sue for entry. Yeah, well, I think you I'd submit that scene. Would you uh, really? Yeah, this is his finest work, his masterpiece, and it's for us, I think. And I say us, Dayton Duncan's the co-writer and co-producer. It's where we focused all of our attention in making a piece of literature come alive, helping to explain its origin, understanding its importance with regard to not only literature, but race in America. And then we hope, by even though we don't deal with the contemporary issues of Huck Finn, the fact that it's one of the most banned books in American libraries. I think by the end of this, because of who comments, because of how we select it, that it renders moot and perhaps even idiotic anyone who would ban it in the future. Where do you rank this, and don't be, be candid, among all the things you have done, both in terms of the experience and the result? Well, working with Dayton is like always the best experience but of the films I'm as proud of this as anything so it's up there with Civil War and baseball and jazz in terms of I think the way it works the legs it has um, and all the echoes uh, of it it's on it's on lots of different levels and and you can uh, look at this at a in a high school uh, classroom and in fact we've got educational materials yeah. that GM's put out or you can just see it as a uh, as as just a uh, just an unbelievable roller coaster of a story my thanks, my friend. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Back in a moment. Stay with us.